Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to hop on here and read something to you and see if you could figure out who it's about, okay? It says, but he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord make his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoils with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So I want to ask you again, who do you think that is about? So most of you probably said Jesus, right? Well, would it surprise you that this passage is found in Isaiah chapter 53, which was written 700 years prior to the birth of Jesus Christ. This is just one of the many prophecies in the Old Testament that was fulfilled by Jesus Christ's birth, life, death, burial, and resurrection. The chances of only eight of these prophecies being fulfilled, and we know that there are more than a hundred in the Old Testament at least, but the chances of only eight being fulfilled are like dropping someone from an airplane over the state of Texas and the state of Texas being filled with red coins, completely filled over the surface area of Texas and dropping someone randomly over the state of Texas and there being one gold coin in the entire state and they actually find that one coin when they land. That is the chances of only eight prophecies being fulfilled and we know there are many as the world grows darker and darker around us i just feel the urgency to get on here and share the light that is jesus christ in john 1 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god the same was in the beginning with god all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehends it not. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, Jesus Christ, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. The prophet Isaiah also came to bear witness to the coming light, which is Jesus Christ. And he gave a prophecy of the coming Messiah that would be despised and rejected that would be cursed, that would bear the iniquity of our sins. 
if we read Isaiah 53, it directly corresponds to the gospel, which is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3-4. through 4. And it says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. In Isaiah 53.10, it says, It pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his offspring, he shall prolong his days. Here where it talks about offspring, it's talking about the spiritual offspring that Jesus brought in when he rose again from the grave. In James 1, 18, it says, He chose to give us birth through the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. When we believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, the gospel, that he died on the cross for our sins, was buried, and rose again three days later, we are born again with his Holy Spirit. We become spiritual offspring of God, which fulfills Isaiah 53. In Acts chapter 17, verse 28, it says, For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Those who believe in Jesus Christ and have been born again are the children of God. And I just want to ask you if you have believed on Jesus, if you have believed in him as Lord and Savior of your life. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all are sinners and we are all in desperate need of a Savior. It says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6, 23. Our good works will not, cannot get us to the Father. If we have broken even just one of his commandments, we are guilty. When many people are asked if they're going to heaven, most people say, yes, I'm going to heaven. I'm a good person. But this is not how you get into heaven. That would be like going to court for running a red light and when you get to court and you're standing before the judge you tell them but i'm a good person i paid my taxes i arrived to work on time i helped the old lady cross the street i call my mom every day i tell my kids that i love them the judge is not going to let you go from that offense without paying for it unless someone comes and pays the price for you takes your punishment for you you are still guilty of that offense no matter what good things that you do in your life you can never outweigh the bad with the good because you are still guilty of that offense and only Jesus Christ came and bore your sins for you took the place took your punishment for you on the cross and he can wash away all of your sins if you only believe in him and trust in his finished work on the cross. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There is no other way to heaven but through the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father but through him. It says in Romans 10, 9 through 10, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If you believe on Jesus, you will be saved. And call upon his name today. It says in the Bible, anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. I have an urgency to get the gospel out. It is good news. This world is very dark, but he is the light. And I pray that you will allow the light to break through in your heart and your life today. That you will believe on Jesus Christ and be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16